Judy, you're getting along pretty well. Thanks, Ryan. But you don't go anywhere. We have a new episode of Garden Time. Welcome to Garden Time. It's June and it is berry season. We're out here at Portland Nursery and just like all your other independent garden centers, they are loaded with lots of berries that you can plant for this season. And later in the show, we'll be at French Prairie Gardens where they are celebrating strawberries with their berries, brews, and barbecue. But also coming up in the show today, we'll be talking about the boxwood blight and what you can do for it. We'll also be previewing a garden tour in McMinnville. But coming up first, it's all about roses. Well, it's Rose Festival time. I'm with Sarah. We're out here at Portland Nursery. And Sarah, since it is Rose Festival time, you guys have the Rose Festival Rose. We do. We have, uh, we're actually the only ones to carry the exclusive uh, Rose Festival Rose. Um, it's a beautiful rose this year called Rosie Reunion. And uh, it's got a really nice kind of like ballet pink color. Um, nicely scented, disease resistant. So it's a really great rose to come check out. And if it's not one that you like, we have a lot of other roses and pretty much any kind of rose you're looking for. Right, you do have a ton, ton of roses. And you know, like you're saying, you know, Portland Nursery is the only person that's able to carry the Rose Festival rose this year. And either at your division store or your start here at Stark Correct. Street. And you know, we are standing in a, in a sea of roses, which is, you know, great for this time of year. I noticed that there hasn't been a lot of color yet. Yeah, I mean, this weather that we've been having here, you know, is a little colder and wetter than we normally would. So it's actually the perfect time um, because all of these roses are just budding out and you'll still have time to have just a beautiful blooms at home. Yeah, and with, you know, with the nicer weather is coming on, these roses are going to open up. It's a great time to actually see the bloom and what, is, what it's gonna look like, the plant. Yeah, a lot of times we sell out a lot of our roses before the actual blooms come on. And so um, this, yeah, like you said, gives you a chance to see it in person and decide if you like the rose. Um, so yeah, it's a great time to come plant. And then, you know, so we talked about, you know, some people might think it's a little too late because they usually get them a little earlier in the season, but it's not. You know, it's so not. if somebody's purchasing a rose, you know, this, this time of year, you know, what are some just basic, you know, planting tips that they should have? Yeah, so you're going to um, want to, so roses don't like overhead water. So it's actually not great that we've had all this rain um, now that they've leafed out. But, um, so you're going to want to keep it in a place that's away from a sprinkler, um, you know, maybe some uh, drip line yeah. or something for, for watering so that the water isn't getting on the leaves. Um, good ventilation. So I think you know, roses have a tendency to get like powdery mildew, um, black spot, so really kind of molding issues. So just, um, yeah, good ventilation, no overhead water, um, nice sunny spot, and you're going to want to dig a hole, you know, as deep and twice as wide as the rose pot that it's in, um, amend with some compost and fertilizer. We've got all the supplies here that, that you would need to come plant a rose. Right. And you know, you're mentioning you know some of the you know disease problems that they might get since it's been so cool and wet this spring. Mm -hmm. Things are kind of popping up a little bit more. Yeah, especially black spot. You know, in our area, it's funny that we're a rose city because uh, you know the roses uh, do well here, but the the rain really it's almost inevitable to get some black spot, and some some um, varieties are more resistant than others. So that's something to look for when you're shopping. But um, a little black spot is somewhat normal, but you want to get on it if you're seeing it right. really start to spread. You know, and if, you know, people that are having some issues with the roses, you have a great service here that they can come, you know, bring a sample in or talk to, right? Oh yeah, our information desk is amazing. Um, sending in some pictures or bringing in a sample is really great and um, they can get you fixed up with any solution that you need for your roses. All right, so if you're looking to plant a rose or to add to what you already have, put something new, or get the exclusive Rose Festival Rose. Make sure you come down here to Portland Nursery, either the Stark store or the Division store. Come talk to Sarah, come talk to their staff, get all the information you need and all the supplies you need to plant a rose, and come check out the great selection. Yeah, there's nothing like a bouquet of, of roses on the table. Right, that's so. right, it's Rose Festival time, so yep. come down and visit Portland Nursery. Thanks for having us. Thank you.
Well, I'm so excited to be at Capital Subaru in Salem, and we're talking about Subaru Garden Days, which is happening next Saturday, and I'm with Brian. So, Brian, we yeah. love coming out here. Ryan and I will be here all day, and it's just a day of fun. Yeah, we love hosting Garden Days. I think this is our 12th or 13th year, and uh, we'll be under the pavilion. We're going to have a lot, of, a lot of giveaways. We've got uh, snap peas, and we've got lettuce. Um, we're going to have... Uh, free food and refreshments, Humane Society, dog grooming, just anything you can think of. It's going to be a great day. Ah, so bring your dog like Jeff here. Yeah, yeah. this is Asher. <laughs> free, free car wash. I mean, a dog wash. <laughs> <laughs> And really, this facility here is not even a year old, the new Subaru dealership. No, so we had our grand opening in September. And uh, so, yeah, we're just coming on to uh, our first summer being here. It's been amazing. It's over 70,000 square feet. We've got a 20-foot live green wall That's inside. Beautiful. So when you come down for garden days, come take a tour of the dealership. We've got a pet park over here. So it's fun for the entire family. And can we even test drive a Subaru? Absolutely, yes. Please come on down. Anything we have. Uh, and you know, also, Garden Time will be here. Ryan and I will be here. And you can enter to win gift cards from Portland Nursery and Owls. We have some books. And it'll be so much fun to see you. And so make sure you come and see us. There's going to be vendors here. We have plants, garden art. Peggy Moje is going to be here. She's going to be actually doing a watercolor painting. Ooh, that's exciting. Which is really cool. And the Oregon Orchid Society is going to be Ooh. here. And they're going to be giving tips on on little classes about orchid care and have orchids to sell. So Ooh, really, amazing. so many different things for different people, your different hobbies. Yeah, sounds like we're gonna have everything covered. And Brian, about this event, it's really nice because you get to mingle, you get to see plants and art, but really you can see your all your display beds. You have raised beds of vegetables and you can even have something to eat. Absolutely, yeah. We're gonna have a couple different vendors here with complimentary food and drink. We also have got behind us, you can see the Happy Heart Coffee Company. That's got a full array of anything you can find at a coffee shop and more. So please come on down and take advantage and join us. Uh, so mark your calendar. It's going to be next Saturday, the 11th from 11 to 3. You can go to the Garden Time website and just click on the Garden Day, Subaru Garden Days um, icon there and you get more information. Well, thanks so much. We're so looking forward to it. Thank you. Since 1982, the wall has been making local gardens beautiful, naturally. Whether you need a new wall, concrete patio, fire pit, or driveway, the wall's expert craftsmen can build it. We back up our work with a five-year warranty so you'll know it'll last. We use the highest quality materials, including stamped colored concrete, natural stone, and we're the leader in using recycled concrete. Create an outdoor environment you'll enjoy for years with the help of your friends at The Wall. Find everything you need for summer at Al's Garden and Home. Subaru Garden Days returns to the Capital Subaru Pavilion in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join Ryan and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days June 11th at Capital Subaru. If you're looking for the highest quality plants to take your garden to the next level, look no further than M&M Herb Nursery. Rosie and her staff grow huge, beautiful plants, including all your favorites. We also have some cool tropical plants that can transform your garden into a paradise. We have a large selection of pollinator plants, especially for hummingbirds, plus specialty perennials, baskets, pots, and yes, even herbs. Come see all of our great plants at M&M Herb Nursery in Hubbard. Join Garden Time as we hit the road again. In September of 2022, we'll travel to Holland and Belgium. We'll visit the world-famous Allsmuir Flower Auction, Flora World, the University Gardens of Ghent, and the Japanese Gardens of The Hague. We'll also visit the once-a-decade Floriot Expo, the World's Fair of Gardening. Enjoy the sights, sounds, and tastes of Ghent, The Hague, and Amsterdam on this wonderful tour. Go to Garden Time Tours for more information, and we'll see you in Europe. Well, it has been a cool, wet spring, but how much fun to come out to Frenchbury Gardens and for berries, brews, and barbecue. And it's happening this weekend for the next three weeks. And so tell us all about what's going on. 
Oh, sure. It's one of our favorite festivals of the year. It always kicks off the first three weekends in June. So come on out today um, and enjoy our strawberries. You can uh, pick strawberries out of our fields. They're just coming on. So we should have strawberries all three weekends. That is cool because sometimes they're already gone. Yes. So it's been maybe great that it's a little bit cooler. It this is. Year. <laughs> it is. I think there'll be strawberries for all three weekends, and we also do have awesome barbecue. So pulled pork sandwiches, mm. chicken dinners, barbecue plate is always the most popular, and I would suggest that maybe you book that online to make sure if you come at the end of the day, we do have lots of barbecue left. Oh, that is a great idea, and it's also Father's Day is this month, and so maybe have Dad come out oh, and yes. any of the weekends. Oh, the three things that I like, barbecue, berries, and beer. And so talking about beer, you have some two new ones? I do. So we have uh, some of our beer that's donated that goes, uh, the proceeds go to our cancer foundation called M's Fight. Um, we help local people fighting cancer, so we have a cider from Two Town Cidery, it's their pineapple cider, so the Ooh. sweet for that person. And then if you're like me and like IPAs, we have a Citrus Mistress IPA from Hot Valley, and we'll probably have a lot of IPAs and a lot of summery kind of beers and a lot of cider. Ah, that is good. And so what else can we do? Because the kids are gonna come, or friends are gonna oh, come, and so what else can we do? Well, for adults, we have our beer and cider, we have live music, and for the kiddos, we have a lot of different fun things. We have our tractor wagon ride, our pink little train ride, our ninja course, our obstacle course, and of course, our brand new mega ride and slide. Ah, uh, and so can big people go too? Oh, yes, yes, <laughs> big people can go too. That is so good because, you know, sometimes it's just for kids and so then we all, we all miss out. <laughs> And I see that you, we are surrounded by color. Yes. So really to bring some plants home for our gardens. Yes, yes, yes. We do have quite a bit left with this, you know, rainy, cool spring, but they are ready, perfect size for you to go home. And I'm guessing there might be a few sales going on as well. Okay, because <laughs> it's not too late to plant. You know, we've all been inside because of this weather, but really the plants have been waiting for when we're ready. So I yes. think that you are ready to supply all that. We are, we are. And so where can we get all this information? Uh, on our website at fpgardens.com, and you can click on the link there and uh, pre-order your tickets to save. If you order online, you save some money, and you can get that barbecue meal, get all those fun add-ons that you need, and so you're ready to just walk in and get started having fun. Oh, it just sounds like such a great event. It's happening for the next three weekends. So please go to Garden Time. We'll click over to their website and have a great time with your family and friends this month. Thanks so much. Thank you. I'm with Ed, we're out at Fishingham Gardens, and Ed, a couple years ago, we were talking about, you know, making, you know, seed tape. You can buy that in the stores. And this is kind of a fun project, you know, you can do at home. Because, you know, you get some of these seeds that are super hard to sow because they're so small. Right. But you got kind of a really creative way of making your own. Well, I actually found this, um, uh, discovered this on the internet, um, and it's really easy to do. You just take some toilet paper, and if you're um, particular, like I am, you have something to mark the spacing of the seeds on the toilet paper. And then all you do is you take a paintbrush and some glue. It can be any sort of glue that is um, water soluble. And all you do is you dip your paintbrush in the glue and dip it in the seeds and you paint seeds on the tape. The good thing is you can either grab one or two seeds at a time or just one, space them, and you can do this in advance of planting, let it dry, and it will keep for months before you plant it. So now after you have it all, you know, your seeds are all on there, right. how do you go and plant this? So. All you have to do is, once you've got this rolled up with the seeds, all you do is take it over and unroll it and take some compost or soil, place this on, on top of the soil, put your additional soil on top of it, and you're done. Nice and simple. So this is kind of a super fun project, but you know, so what are the benefits of this? Well, uh, one of the large benefits for someone who's super busy like I am is it's, um, you can prep the seed tape far in advance um, and then plant it when, whenever you have time to plant it. Yeah. Um, uh, you also don't have to thin the, the seedlings. 
um, or waste seeds in Ed's world, that's a big thing. Um, and um, it's also an opportunity if you have children or uh, children of friends to get the kids involved because they can paint the seeds on the seed tape for you. Yeah, so this is a great project you can do at home, you can involve your whole family with, do it ahead of time, and it'll save you some money on your seeds. Our tip of the week is a really easy one. It's using your smartphone to remember garden chores. You know, we have them all, we have calendars, and we forget when to do those garden chores, like when to fertilize those roses or when to water the house plants. Just put it in your calendar, and then you'll get a reminder to do those chores. Using your smartphone for garden chores, that's our tip of the week. Garden Time is brought to you by Portland Nursery, a passion for plants, a nursery for plant people. At Portland Nursery, we believe that gardening is a creative endeavor that enriches our experience, enlivens the spaces around us, and provides a safe haven for the mind. Portland Nursery has everything you need to make your space feel unique, inviting, and exciting. From house plants and hedges, to trees, tools, veggies, and herbs, our selection is always growing and changing, just like you. Come visit us today at 50th and Stark, 90th and Division. There's nothing more inviting than a garden full of beautiful clematis. And your chance to see the Queen of Vines is at the Rogerson Clematis Garden at Lusher Farm. Tour five incredible gardens during the Inviting Vines Tour in Lake Oswego and Westland. A box lunch and wine tasting are also available. Check out the website for all the details. Every garden deserves to have a clematis. To learn more about the garden and all of its many activities, go to rogersonclematiscollection.org. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. No matter what shade your green thumb is, you can find the plants and the help you need at Wavra Farms. We're filled with an astounding array of colorful plants to fill your garden. In addition to wonderful annuals and perennials, we are known for our hanging baskets. We also have all your garden essentials and we have great garden gifts too. From beginner to expert, you'll find something new and different with every visit. Wavra Farms, located off Highway 22, exit 5, east of Salem. I'm here today with Dr. Tom Smiley from the Bartlett Research Lab. And today we're standing in front of the beautiful garden, which is full of boxwood hedges. And you know, a lot of us have heard about boxwood blight. What is boxwood blight? Yes, boxwood blight is a fungal disease. It's relatively new to the Pacific Northwest. And it can be absolutely devastating to a boxwood garden like this one. And it's actually gotten into this garden uh, and is starting to cause some problems. So what, what is the blight? What, what do we... uh, the blight is a fungus that will attack uh, first the foliage and it will give us spots on the foliage and then it will move into the stems and it gives us black lesions on the stems. Uh, it will continue down the stems until it kills the whole plant if it's left untreated. So that would be some of the symptoms then would be kind of this, this discoloring or spotting on the leaves and the stems. And then yes. you said, does it defoliate the plant or does it just kill it? Or? Yes, that's one of the ways that you can distinguish this disease from many other boxwood diseases. And boxwood gets a lot of diseases and has right. other problems. Uh, but this one will cause defoliation in the summer. A lot of times with boxwood uh, diseases, the leaves are retained dead for a while. With this one, they drop during the growing season. Is there, and where, where does it come from? I mean, how does, it, how does uh, the plant get? It came there? from uh, Europe originally and then uh, is transmitted around. One of the most common ways it's transmitted is with new plants into the garden. So uh, there were some nurseries a decade or more ago that were selling some contaminated plants and it's kind of contaminated the whole Pacific Northwest with those wow. plants. Uh, and then so that you get one new plant in the garden and it can spread 
to the rest of the garden. So is it spreading just by airborne or how does it? Yeah, so these spores are very sticky. So when you walk through the garden and you brush up against a plant with your clothes or your pruning tools or even your dog, uh, the spores will stick to those uh, surfaces. Oh, wow. And then you touch another plant that's healthy and you've just put the spores on it. So you have to be very careful, especially when pruning. Uh, if you're gonna do your whole garden, start with the healthy plants first. Finish with these, always in the day. Uh, and if you're moving from garden to garden, you need to protect your clothes or change clothes uh, because quite honestly, landscapers can spread this uh, by accident as well. And it's probably important to sanitize your, your pruning tools or all your tools. Yes, you all your tools, uh, yes. And, and even carrying out debris. The debris should be bagged at the site uh, and don't drop leaves. Don't drag it like you would a tree branch. Right. Uh, it all has to be contained. So you don't want to put it in your yard debris or your compost it because it'll spread. So make Correct. sure you bag it and then put it in, in more in the landfill. Yeah, I'm sorry to say, but landfill it, yeah. yeah. Um, and same with the whole plant, a whole dead plant, bag it on site, don't drag that soil anywhere. Put it in a the bag, then it goes to the landfill. So if, we, you know, we've, if we've determined that we do have a boxwood blight in our, in our garden, what can we do to either prevent it yes. or to treat what we already have? Yes, so there are a number of different things we should do. One is let's watch out for irrigation. So this is also spread, it's a sticky spore, but it's also splash spread. So uh, irrigation head like this uh, can spread it and it improves the environment. So the environment needs to be wet, which is why it spreads right. in the spring. So when we have rain, that it will spread it. Uh, irrigation we can control. Uh, so uh, that is one thing. Watch our irrigation. Uh, drip is better than okay. overhead. Um, pruning. We'd like to open up the, the hedge if we can. We don't want it too tight because the tighter it is, the less air circulation. Okay. So if we can prune so there are some openings in the hedge, that's going to let it dry out. Uh, then the real big gun is the fungicide programs. Okay. And uh, fungicides can be very effective with this disease as well as most other plant diseases. Uh, but we need to do fairly frequent applications ranging from about two to four weeks between application depending on the material you're using. Right. And I know Bartlett has, has services that will come out yes. and, and treat that and they can identify it and, and put people on a treatment plan. Yes, absolutely right. And, and you can do it yourself uh, as well if your landscape isn't too large. <laughs> right. You know, so there is some over-the-counter yes. or that you can pick up at your local garden right. center. Right. Your garden can... center can guide you to the right fungicide. To do that. So, yes. so it sounds like, you know, it's very important, you know, to maybe catch it earlier. Are there preventative measures uh, that we can use? Absolutely. So one preventative uh, measure, if you're bringing new boxwood into your garden, plant them off to the side uh, for the first season. Make sure they're not blighted because the nursery people, they don't want to sell you contaminated right. plants, but sometimes they don't know either. Right. So plant it off to the side, then move it into your garden the next season when you know that it's clean. Right. And so if we have a hedge that, you know, has has blighted and they've removed sections of that hedge yes. and they want to replant that yes. area is that an okay thing uh, or do they need to be yeah it's it's okay but you really have to keep an eye on that and then the fungicide programs again can be very effective uh, at keeping it down. I think we'll show you some examples in this garden uh, where they have pruned to start with pruning out right. the, the blighted material, then put it on a fungicide program, and we have really good response. Uh, right. Boxwoods are incredible, incredibly tough plants. Right, they're, they're a very resilient plant. They but sure it does sound like it's important to stay, stay on top of it and you know, follow, follow a lot of the tips that you have. Yes. You know, some more of the tips, you, know, you can go to the gardentime.tv website. We'll kick it over to the Bartlett site where they have more information on this. And you know, it's one of those, we love our boxwoods here we in the do. Northwest. <laughs> yeah, it's such a great plant. Yes. We just want to make sure we keep our hedges healthy. Absolutely. So thank you for all the information. Thank you. Garden Time is brought to you by Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Start your new Subaru story at Capital Subaru. We are like nothing else. From the moment you step through these doors, you see it, you feel it. We do things differently here. Our people, our culture, our customer experience. 
Tell us what you're looking for and we'll upgrade the way you shop for Subarus. When you're just browsing, need great service, or starting your next adventure, we're always here for you. It's your story at Capital Subaru, your way on the parkway. Welcome to Blooming Junction, where it's easy to connect with nature. At Blooming Junction, you'll find beautiful, healthy plants, good, fresh food, and a place to regain peace and calm in your life. We have an unsurpassed collection of unique and distinctive plants and the expertise to help any gardener be successful. And we feature Blooming Advantage plants. Come check out Blooming Junction for an inspiring experience in the garden or in the kitchen. Blooming Junction, offering quality plants for beautiful gardens. A vintage flea returns to Margie's Farm and Garden for our summer market. Browse over 50 vendors with all things vintage, antique, repurposed, and handmade. Enjoy food vendors, product demonstrations, and hands-on crafts. You can also take home a beautiful plant, basket, or planter from Margie's huge selection. Shop all day from 9 to 5 with free admission. Check out our Facebook page or website for all the details. That's a vintage flea at Margie's Farm and Garden. We'll see you there! I'm at Margie's Farm and Garden with Margie. And so Margie, today is a really special day here. So what is going on? Oh my gosh, we're so excited. This is our annual vintage flea market. So we have 50 plus vendors set up wow. today. Yes, it's amazing. There's something for everyone. We have antiques, repurposed, handcrafted, vintage, um, furniture, handmade cards, I, anything you could imagine. Oh, that is so cool because, you know, for the last couple of years, it, maybe it hasn't been going on or a lot of things haven't been going on, but this is a fun, fun event. It's so, it's so fun to be back and here with everybody and everybody's so excited to be here. Um, we also have food. Whoa. So we have a food truck doing hamburgers, pulled pork sandwiches, a variety of things. We have a sweets booth. We have drinks. We have all sorts of things. Teriyaki chicken. <laughs> so come for your food too. And so um, can we just come in? Is it a fee or what? how does that work? It is free. So last night we had our ticketed event, which was a great time. And then today's free all day, free parking, free entrance. Come in, do your shopping and have a great time. Uh, and you know, the other fun part is that you can bring home flowers because really it's not too late to plant. It's been a crazy spring. It's been a crazy spring, so it's of course not too late to plant. We have a great selection still, hanging baskets, patio pots, annuals, perennials, trees and shrubs. Nice. We've got it all, so um, time to come out. And we're doing a fabulous special this weekend, 20% off. Oh, wow, 20% you. off all your flowers. Oh, that is wonderful. Yeah. And so where can we find out all the information? All the inter information, you can go to avintageflea.com to our website. Margie's Farm and Garden or Garden Time website. Excellent. Well, there you go. She stole my line. <laughs> <laughs> well, you heard it from Margie. And so it's going to be a fun day. Watch the rest of the show and then come out and have a great time at a vintage flea and at Margie's Farm and Garden. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well, here a pot, there a pot, everywhere a pot, pot. <laughs> I'm out here at Terra Casa with Diana and Diana. You have pots. <laughs> we do have pots. We got them earlier this year and we got a lot of them and we are in the pot business. You are. <laughs> yes, right. you know, you're not new to the pot business, nope. but there are a lot of new colors and new yes. glazes and new yes. styles. Yes, I had a new resource this year and we're pretty thrilled with all the new colors. And we have this one colorway with the purples is just flying out the door. So yeah, it's uh, really fun. They're, they're different glazes and they're, they're something that a lot of people haven't seen before. So. And we were noticing even in some of your displays how you've taken them and you know there's you know round ones and tall ones you've made bubblers and fountains mm -hmm. out of them and you can kind of like custom tie all of these matching pots throughout your patio and your garden right and that's one of the things we do recommend is sticking with the same colorway out in your patio or your backyard is, is it gives it a nice canvas to work with and then your plants get to be the the focal point as well 
But um, these are fun, and they are they can also be just a standalone art piece because they're so beautiful. Right, yeah, they are. And it is a piece of art mm -hmm. sitting there. Like you said, you know, you can plant in them, but you're also turning them into fountains. Right, yeah. And any of the pots that we have in the pot lot can be turned into a fountain. So it's all a very custom thing. If you want this size pot and this size bowl, or if you want a reservoir, we have all the parts, all the components, and everything. Right, for you it. can make it make it anything that exactly. you want, really. Yes. But you also have some that are already pre-done, ready to go. Yeah. These kind of a grab and go. These fat were really popular last year. So um, the nice thing about them is they're self-contained so that you can set them up anywhere on your patio or your front porch or your yard. Um, the pump comes with it. So you can like, it's a grab and go kind of thing. You can take it home with you and set it up to update day, put some water in it and you're good to go. So Right. You know, because as the weather is finally breaking finally. and we're able to get out <laughs> into our yards and enjoy our patios, yes. it's nice to have that. You know, that sound of the water exactly. or the pot or being able to be able to Right, do that. right. And it just makes it easy. It's one of those instant gratification things where with our custom bubblers, you do have to have it made. We It takes about a week or so and we can deliver, we can set up, we can we can install your reservoir, we can do all that for you. But this is one of those, I want a patio, a bubbler, and I want it today, and you can just come right. get it. Take it home, just a plug and play. Exactly. You know, and aside from you know, all the amazing fountains that you do and all the pottery, you have a lot of like gift lines. We do. Yeah. We have a lot of garden art, um, the uh, the ceramic mushrooms, which are very, very popular, the shroomies. Um, we have a lot of fire pits and, you know, everyone be careful with fire, but they a lot of them have the screen guards on them. Right. So they're nice to use in the backyard to keep warm or for roasting marshmallows and lots of lots of fun things. Yeah, And there are a lot of different styles on the fire pits that we saw. You know, yeah. Like it's, it's not just your round, round right. bin to build there's, a fire. There's, there's some, some real rusty ones. There's some cut out ones, later laser cut out, and there's just really big giant cast iron bowls too. Right, because you know now is the time to be in our in our yards. You know, yes. we're getting everything, we're getting all of this inspiration. You know, and it's you know, the pottery and the fountains are the focal point of what right. draws you into your garden. We're gonna be spending a lot of time out in our backyards this <laughs> <Right>. year. <laughs> so you know if you're looking for a bubbler or a pot or yard art, you know, checking out the inside for the indoor decor, bringing the outdoor decor, make sure you come out here to Terra Costa, visit Diana and her staff and just be inspired. Exactly. Thank you, Diana, for having Thank us you. today. Thank you. I'm at Garden Gallery Ironworks in Hubbard, where they're known for their beautiful indoor and outdoor decor. If you've been to their store, you know that they have beautiful trellises and arbors, garden art, patio furniture, and even gifts for any occasion. So you may ask yourself, I would love to have any of those items. Well, your chance is now. In honor of Garden Time's last season, Garden Gallery Ironworks is giving us a $200 gift certificate to give to one lucky viewer. It's easy to enter to win. Just go to the Garden Time website and click on the banner. The drawing ends on June 19th, and the winner will be drawn on June 20th. Good luck to everyone, and thank you to Garden Gallery Ironworks. DRAM is celebrating 75 years of design and manufacturing of quality watering tools. DRAM products feature nine water patterns and are designed to nurture your plants with a shower of rain. DRAM for lawn and garden, available at garden centers near you. Come to where the color is. Come to Egan Gardens. We've worked hard growing healthy plants for you so that your gardening is easy. Add sparkle to your garden with our perennials, container plants, and skillfully designed baskets and planters. Stop and get a mood lifter out here on the farm. We have lots of fresh air and lots of space. There's lots of blooming plants, new vegetable starts, shrubs, and berry bushes. Egan Gardens, where it's all about the plants. We're located west of I-5 at exit 263 on River Road. At Sagawa Nursery, we always talk about taking your garden from ordinary to extraordinary. For us, that means bringing you the newest and best plants and unique garden items to you, our customer. For you, that means we'll help you transform your garden into something that's extraordinary. We also have some great gift items and even a few surprises for inside your home, too. Sagawa Nursery, growing beyond the ordinary.
there's an amazing garden tour happening on Sunday, June 12th in McMinnville from the McMinnville Garden Club. And I'm with Susan, whose garden is at one of the tour stops. And so Susan, this is an amazing garden that has so much color. What do you love about it? Or if you can tell us a little bit about the garden. Well, um, I love the fact that it's kind of a private space, even though we are close to the city and to traffic. It's a great place to spend your uh, summer evenings and summer days out. Um, I'm a plant lover, and so the garden it has a lot of different kinds of plants in it. And I, I built the garden, this, this stage of the garden, because the garden is never finished, <laughs> on another woman, another plant woman, or plant lover garden. So uh, it has a lot of, uh, I think by the time the garden tour, the lilies should be out. Um, I like roses, so there'll be roses, um, and then some little surprises here and there. Ah, and there's raised beds for vegetables, yes. and also you're an um, artist, and your studio is here, and your art is all around the garden. Yes, uh, it's a great inspiration. Ah. Uh, and I especially like painting the flowers, because I'm a flower lover. And uh, I, I also really love that I can usually make really beautiful bouquets of flowers mm. all summer long. So that's a fun part of this kind of a garden. Uh, it's not a very well-planned garden. It is a spontaneous garden. Well, I think they all turn out to be that. <laughs> that is so true. Well, you'll really enjoy this garden, and there's other ones on the tour. And we're going to go to the Surprise Garden. That's another stop on the tour and find out all about the event happening on the 12th. Thanks so much, Susan. Thank you. Well, that was a beautiful garden that, that is on the McMinnville Garden Club tour, but now we are at one of the sites that is going to benefit from the tour. We are actually at the Serenity Garden, and I am with Vicki and Patty. And so, Vicki, this doesn't all happen in a vacuum. You have all these people that are helping with the tour and the garden. Absolutely. First of all, I'd like to introduce Patty Sorensen, who is the, really the founder of the garden. <laughs> Then I would like to introduce Cooper Fisher, who is with the hospital representation here. I would also like to introduce Patty Williams, who is the executive director of the Will Willamette Valley Cancer Foundation. Then we have Adele O'Neill, who is the president of the Garden Club. And we have Stephanie, who is our wonderful cancer survivor, as well as our one of our really old members. But we appreciate her here, so thank you. Well, this is such a dynamic group. And so we were on the site actually of the new Serenity Garden. So tell us how you've got here because this is a long time in the planning. Yeah, we were looking for a project that we could do over time that would have a real community impact. And the three of us that started doing the project all had cancer backgrounds of having lost people or having had treatment. And so we, as we honed it down, we found this site and with all the plans we had in our mind, it fit just perfectly. So we've done two phases. One is the baskets, which you'll see. And then we planted these trees in order to block the vans that sit out here and unload and load. This is the windows. These are the windows where um, the cancer treatment center has their patients sit as they get their treatment. So. This will be a long, long term. There's a lot of hardscape and planting and, and we're looking forward to having a lot of people a partner with us to help us fund this for the community. Uh, you know, it's a wonderful project. And so Vicki, it's um, not just the hospital that will benefit, it's actually the whole community can come and see this too. Absolutely, absolutely, Judy. We've been promoting this as a community garden to begin with because across the street from us, there is a one mile walking path that has was built 20 years ago. And it's a walking path made out of rubberized material, mm. which is excellent for people with injuries and people <laughs> who are rehabilitating. Now, the other benefit that the club does because of the funds raised by the tour, we actually donate those funds and make available for scholarships for some horticultural students, as well as funding our own community service projects, of which this one is the newest and the biggest. So Vicki, the hospital here is a really big partner with the Garden Club. Absolutely. The Willamette Valley Medical Center, which is where we're standing behind right now, is, has been our partner. And we have been really helpful with getting it help, getting it created and the foundation understood so that we're in a place now where we can go in and, and use our landscape plan, the Garden Club's landscape plan, plan and build it out. So uh, we're looking forward to that. Uh, and so tell us just a few of the key elements that are going to be in the garden. Yes, we're excited about that. Uh, we have a beautiful plan that has been 
put together by several members of the Garden Club and implementing that. We're going to, in the future, hopefully add to the baskets and the trees, but we're wanting to add a lot of hardscaping. If you'll see the, the place where you are standing right now will is a, going to be a, an entryway into the garden that's going to be ADA compliant so patients in the hospital can come out in wheelchairs, walkers, and still enjoy the garden as well. But we also plan water features. We're going to build a, a pergola. We're going to build in and mount a seven-foot pagoda that was donated to us. Uh, we're going to obviously do plantings throughout uh, that are still yet to come as well. But uh, so that excited. is amazing. It is. So really a big event going on next weekend. And so where can we send everyone to get all the information? Actually, the best place you can go to would be our Facebook page, which is McMinnville Garden uh, Club. And then the other place, obviously, would be on the, on the actually, the, I guess maybe right now our website is a little bit shaky, but we'll, there will be some information up there, too. But uh, basically, it's the Facebook page and that website would be the best places ah. right now. And really the tour is going on, but then there's also, also a wonderful garden fair. Yes, the garden fair is going to be in downtown McMinnville, and it's open from nine until three. And the best part about that is that it's right next door to City Hall. Oh. So everybody can find the location. The fair is free. People can come and go from it and uh, obtain tickets there as well for the day of, which is an important thing to know oh. too. Yes, sir. Well, you know, this is a long-lived garden club, and it's, what year was it founded? 1926. Oh, 1926. <laughs> so it's just a wonderful group of people to support all of these community activities and also this lovely garden that will be going in. So please go to Gardentime.tv. We can click you over to the Facebook page and the website, but what a wonderful way to support this community and this garden club. Absolutely. Thanks so much. Thanks, Thank everyone. Thank you, Judy. Thank you. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. For 90 years, Espoma has one guiding principle. Develop the finest organic gardening products that work in harmony with nature, grow beautiful gardens, and make a greener world for the future. From our soil products to our plant foods, we have always been committed to the environment and sustainability. We use a vast array of natural and organic ingredients and package them in our 100% solar powered plant. Look for the quality line of Espoma products at your local independent garden center. Espoma, organic from the beginning. You can use water wisely this summer with these simple tips. Periodically, check your watering system to make sure it is working correctly. Tighten hose connections and adjust sprinklers to water plants and not the pavement. Give your lawn and garden a deep soak twice weekly instead of watering daily. Skip the fertilizer until the fall and mow your lawn less often. Taller grass holds moisture in longer between waterings. Get more water-wise gardening tips at regionalh2o.org. Garland Nursery, a must-stop destination for those that want to play with plants and grow with their garden. Whether you are a new or a seasoned gardener, Garland Nursery can help fulfill your gardening desires and your landscape needs. From organic veggies, trees and shrubs, to colorful blooms, from the newest trends in garden supplies and garden decor, shop Garland Nursery to find that perfect plant or piece that fills you and your garden with delight. It's always a beautiful day at Garland Nursery. Well, it's the Portland Rose Festival time, and I'm with Rich Bear from the Rose Society, and we're gonna talk to you about the perfect rose. So Rich, you all sponsor, the Society sponsors the Spring Rose Show, and so you have, how many entries usually come every year? Uh, I've averaged them over the last 20 years, and we usually get about 13 to 1,400 individual wow. entries, sometimes higher, sometimes lower, depending upon the weather. And, and so what are the judges looking for? This is a beautiful rose bush here. So what do you look for? Basically when all the rules are set up to have what we think is a beautiful rose, the most beautiful rose win. And there's a lot of things that go into that. The, mostly, if you look at a rose as a non-judge, you'd say, well, that's a, a beautiful flower. Or you'd say, 
you know, if you looked at this one, it's like, <laughs> it's not, a beautiful yeah, one. <laughs> it's not, not, not so good, you know. Right. Um, You're looking at color, form? We're looking at the, if the color is right for the, uh, the variety of the rose. Uh, we're looking for the form, uh, the way the rose is opening up. Um, the center is a, an important feature. A lot of roses have more than, they have a very, what we call a confused center. There'll be a lot of petals in the center that don't act as a spiral away from the center. And so it, it's, as a judge, it becomes very difficult because you could have 10 or 15 roses which are absolutely stunningly beautiful and we, we can only pick one. Oh, sure. And uh, we fight. <laughs> After the fact, we go, how did you guys pick that one, you know? And, and then, do you, sorry, do you have to bring um, foliage, too? Uh, generally speaking, we would like to, and I'm going to cut this rose here, okay. and I'll hold it in my hand here. Uh, if you can, when you, when you bring it to a show, oh, wow. cut something that might be 14 to 18 inches tall. Now, there, there's a rule in this. You can always make it shorter, but you can't make it longer <laughs> no, later, okay? Um, although there are ways to make a stem longer if you actually need to. <laughs> well, that's a secret. We won't get into that. So the foliage is also <laughs> an important part okay. of the judging, uh, the stem and foliage. The, the, the leaves are clean. Um, I had a incidents once where I, I would have won the best in show, but the judges came back and said, you know, if you just turned, had cleaned the bird dew off the leaf, it would have done better. <laughs> and, and, and that's, I'm, it's an important I, I'm tip. very <laughs> lax. I'm very lax in, in what I do at rose shows. I just want people to see the beauty of the flowers that I see. And the day before the show, I walked through the garden and anything that looks like this would be an outstanding example in my garden for something that's beautiful. And that's what I look for. And I, will take up to 40 stems to the rose wow. show. So you can bring multiple entries, one person. Yes. And really anybody can come. You don't have to belong to the society. No. You just have to bring your roses. And then what day do we bring them to the Lloyd Center? I better refer to that oh, right date here okay. because if I say it, I, <laughs> I'd better be right. Thursday right? Uh, from 6.30 in the morning till 9.30. Um, and down at Lloyd Center, and there'll be directions how to get to yes, the space. Yes, um, if you get if you get to Lloyd Center, you'll find us. I'll <laughs> okay. tell you that we have signs. And then, out. really, this is over 130 years that this has been going on. Yes, it's the longest in the world. Wow. And uh, and we, then who started it? What's the history? The very first row show was sponsored by and put on by Mrs. Henry Piddock of the Piddock Mansion fame. Uh, she had traveled to Europe. And she had experienced a rose show there, and she just thought it would be a, a neat thing to do back here. And so she set up a tent in her backyard, uh, downtown Portland, and had her friends, who all had gardens and gardeners, uh, bring roses to her backyard uh, under a tent. And uh, It was a charity event, wasn't it? That, that's what I've read. Although mm -hmm. the history, every time you read history, <laughs> you get a little you different bent on. And she said there was, it was a dime per admission. She said she made a lot more money than she expected to. Uh, <laughs> That's good. <laughs> it's always good to have a successful event. Right. And it's been carried on for 100, 100, over 130 years. So Rich, so if anybody can enter, what kind of tips do you give them? What kind of advice? The most important advice to anybody who wants to enter is to actually do it. <laughs> uh, it it's hard to get ourselves motivated to do things. Uh, our roast show is open to anybody that wants to come. We have special areas and people uh, at it. Uh, this is novice tables oh. for people that have never been there. And we'll have experienced people who can walk you through every stage of how to get your roses into the show. And if you don't know what they are and the name's important, uh, we'll try very hard to identify the roses for you so that you can enter them in the show. Uh, but oh. but other than that, it's, it's open. I remember the first time I did, I was scared to death. Oh, sure, sure. Because Anything new is has that uh, of course. feel to it, but uh, you're sharing the beauty of your garden, which is uh, my garden. I say it's always open because I love to have people walk through oh, it, it because they enjoy it, right? And uh, and I enjoy other people's gardens as well. But, Definitely. But the beauty of the rose is just something unique, and we're giving people an opportunity to see lots of them 
Definitely. And really, if you don't want to enter, you don't have a rose to enter, go see this. It is. It's amazing. There's just hundreds and hundreds of roses in one place that you could see at the Lloyd Center. So if you need more information, go to the Rose Society website. All of the information on how to enter is there and also where to go and just view it. Have a great show. Thank you so much. Well, thank you for allowing us time to go in the air. Find everything you need for summer at Al's Garden and Home. Join us for Berries, Brews, and Barbecue, now happening three weekends in June, featuring Oregon Craft Ciders and Brews and Barbecue. Enjoy barbecue. You pick strawberries, hay rides, live music, and much, much more. It's farm fun for the whole family at French Prairie Gardens. Since 1929, Grimm's Fuel has powered great gardens around our area. With our comprehensive composting and yard debris services, we can apply quality garden mulch, compost, and blended soils with our experienced crews and trucks, including our landscape rock and bark products as well. We are proud of our industry-leading state-of-the-art composting facilities. We also can take care of your fuel oil and firewood needs. Grimm's Fuel, building great gardens since 1929. Subaru Garden Days returns to the Capital Subaru Pavilion in Salem. Join us for a day of food, fun, and garden excitement. Select garden vendors join Ryan and Judy on the parkway from 11 to 3. That's Subaru Garden Days, June 11th at Capital Subaru. Hey everybody, Brian Bauman from Bauman's Farm and Garden, and there is nothing that smells sweeter than oh, fresh basil right fresh out of your garden. This particular variety is called Amazel Basil, and what makes it so amazing is that it produces throughout the summer non-stop. You won't find that in a lot of other varieties. This one comes from Proven Winners. You'll find it in these white pots. And I wanted to take a second to show you some of my favorite varieties from Proven Winners that are going to keep going all summer long. Another one is a Euphorbia. This particular variety is fairly new within the last couple of years. It's called Diamond Snow. And you can see it's covered in white blossoms this plant loves the summertime with all of the heat and blooms non-stop all summer long. And those beautiful white blossoms are phenomenal. Another plant that loves our summer heat is Euvolvulus, blew my mind. <laughs> Try saying that 10 times fast. But let me tell you, the blue flowers on this are absolutely stunning. I've never seen another flower that has this particular color of blue. It blooms non-stop all summer and a lot of the pollinators love this plant. But speaking of pollinators, there is no plant in my garden that hummingbirds love more than salvia. And this is a brand new variety from Proven Winners called Unplugged Pink. It has those dark brackets with a lighter fuchsia colored pink flower coming out from it. It blooms nonstop all summer. This particular variety is a little more compact, so it doesn't get quite as big as some of the other salvias. The hummingbirds love it. The butterflies love it. All the pollinators in your garden are going to love this plant. For a complete selection of your favorite annuals that are gonna bloom nonstop throughout the summer in the Northwest, head on out to Bauman Farms and we look forward to seeing you soon. I have a very interesting guest today. I'm with Peggy Moshe and she is a Portland area artist. And Peggy, how do you describe your art? Does it have like a category? Um, Impressionism uh, veering toward realism. Ah, and really, you come to gardens. I know that we met you not too long ago at Shriners Iris Gardens, but you also go to the tulip fields out right. at Wooden Shoe, and here we are at the Washington International Test Rose Garden. So it's really, really lovely to see you and to see your artwork and depicting this beautiful garden. Um, I love color. I love flowers. Um, I've painted flowers for many years, probably since 1992 is when I fell in love with all the Willamette Valley uh, flower farms. And in fact, uh, I've been to Shriners probably, I don't, I can't count the number of times <laughs> I've been there. Um, I, I love color. So getting started or appreciating some art, what do you do first? I saw that you have this beautiful painting on an easel, but you really start before that, getting ready. Right, I've made mistakes in the past where I start painting and then I'm painting up and then my, my composition is all wrong. Oh. So for now what I do is I start with a pencil, mm -hmm. um, sketch and work out my composition. Uh, that way I can decide what size uh, canvas to use. Um, and I work out the lights and darks and I go from there. Then I just transfer it 
um, onto the canvas. Yeah, but she's a professional. So, <laughs> And I see you have so many different colors on your palette of paint, and so you really have a beautiful arrangement of colors to choose from. Right, I mix those uh, by looking at all of the colors I see, but uh, keeping in mind the values from, say, a 1 um, to a 10, which is the, be the lightest, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I squint when I'm looking at the scene because there's many darks and I'll squint to see is this dark darker than this dark sure. that way you're gonna have a realistic uh, depiction of your um, of what you want to portray. Ah, and I noticed too with your artwork it has a pathway and it leads somewhere so it's like a garden it's like building a garden right so for gardeners it's easier to understand that kind of correlation there exactly I, I like you to um, wander around in the painting and but not go off so there's <laughs> things on the side uh, darks or marks that keep you within it. Ah, well, then you can enjoy the scene. Right. You know, the <laughs> and um, I love being out in the outdoors, the wind and the, the smells of the flowers. And I'm hoping that the joy I feel being out here is translated to my paintings. Ah. And that people can, if you take the painting home, then you can remember what it was like when you were walking through the garden. Ah, yeah, that's true, and that's what we as gardeners do too. Exactly. So we're on a bright sunny day, so you're painting at this minute, and so what if the clouds come over? So what do you do if you have to go home? Say it's going to start raining, do you, do you remember everything in your mind? Not very well. I <laughs> usually take, a, take several photographs uh, of the scene, and then I blow it up, and I look at my painting and see if there's something I missed. Ah, well, there's all kind of tricks of the trade of an artist. Right. <laughs> but I think everyone should uh, give it a try. It's really fun to paint outdoors and you feel freer. Um, with a photograph, um, you don't get all the values. The, the, the darks are black oh, and, sure. you know, you don't see the dimension. And uh, being outdoors painting, you get to paint that. Ah. Well, you heard it from Peggy that we should all take a pad of paper and some watercolors or oils or just pencil and go out in our gardens or go to a city park or a beautiful garden like this garden enjoy it. And, and enjoy. Um, if you have any other questions, you can go to gardentime.tv and go over to Peggy's site. You could see so many of her beautiful photos of her paintings and really enjoy that. And, and I think um, the Portland Art Museum rental sales gallery mm -hmm. has uh, larger works that are for rent and you can rent them oh. for three months and then another three months and then you have to buy them or bring them back. Ah, well you can get all that information out on the website. Well, thank you so much for turning us on to this. I think you've thank taken you. a little bit of the fear out of it. All right, thank you very much. Thank you for watching Garden Time today. And for our Portland area viewers, just wanna let you know that next week we'll be on at 12.30 because of the Rose Festival Grand Floral Parade. And you can always watch our show on our YouTube channel or at gardentime.tv. Judy and I thank you for watching, and we'll see you next week on Garden Time. What are you doing? You said to follow you. Follow us on Facebook. Oh, man. Well, we invite all of our viewers to follow the Garden Time page on Facebook. And on our Facebook page, you'll find links to stories, you'll see upcoming events, and you also might even find a funny joke or two. So don't forget, go to the gardentime.tv webpage and click the link for Facebook. The proceeding was a paid program of the Gustin Creative Group and its sponsors.